So this is uh, Google Earth. I thought I would show you how I sometimes get my maps for my terrain paints, uh, specifically for the base, for my base. I don't always do this technique. It just depends on what I'm doing. But if I want a terrain paint that has the appearance when you're looking at it from far away that it looks like the ground from far away then I'll use something like this in here there is a tools uh, 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 ruler and you can plot down a line and uh, get like say 2048 meters in length if you're using a um, 2k map if your maps 2048 by 2048 then this is why I'm showing you this so you would make you an area that's about 2K by 2K. Uh, I'm gonna exaggerate it a bit though, get a little closer. I'm gonna take a screenshot and go to the. Uh, now that I got my screenshot, I can change my scaling back. So you had to change the scaling to 100% so that I see the pixels as they should be one to one ratio. You don't want them blown up, especially if you're taking a screenshot. You want them to be pretty accurate. So we'll paste that in here. And then we'll crop it one to one. Now, it's not gonna be exactly 2K and you probably ain't gonna want that up there. You know, we could just do it like this, I guess. We could get the whole thing. Why not? Shoot, we'll do it. All right, I'll crop that. Now we need to flatten the image. We need to scale this to 2048 by 2048. Now that's our base map. So let's go to the level. We'll test that in. We'll go to um, driver training. So in here is the terrain paints folder. I'm going to make a new folder for this uh, dirt. Kind of like a valley, but it's more really like dirt. So in here is where I'm going to save my um, base color map. So we'll export as levels, terrain, paints, dirt. All right. So this will be the base color. Um, I'm going to just use JPEGs because they're smaller file size. Quality 100%. I mean, if you're going to use JPEG, you might as well, you need to use it at 100% quality, right? Alright, let's look at a grayscale that's a proper roughness map of um, grass. So I downloaded these from Megascans. So they're not cheap materials by any means they're like the highest quality materials you can get in my opinion um, but I got these so that we can look at them and I can say see how this looks and how that looks that ain't it in the wrong folder here we go so this is ambient occlusion this is the um, this is the uh, base color ambient occlusion uh, in this case uh, there's a, uh, a roughness well, I can't open more than one window oh I do I do I do got it my bad. It is loaded. 
We got a uh, displacement, that would be the height map. We got normals, that be the normal map. So let's look at all these. Get that away. So we got our base color, we got our normals. That's our height map. We got uh, A roughness and an ambient occlusion. So what do you see? Well this is normals. This is the color map. The height map, what is white? Is what is elevated what is dark is what is low to the ground I mean the lower the higher the wider it is the taller it is the darker it is the lower it is all right ambient occlusion shows where to light things and not to light them so in between these clumps of grass is where the shadows are and the roughness map this is a roughness map for a grass. So if you look at it, you can see how one could take this, for example, and bring it into your photo editor. Now this might not be ideal. Uh, they'll give us some idea anyway how to get a color map a roughness map image mode grayscale now it is dark what that more resembles by just converting it to grayscale is uh, if you were using it for specularity mapping not everybody uses PBR all the time, all right? So you can use specular if you're making a model. I mean, that's kind of close. Not really. No, that ain't really close at all, in fact. I think we're fine with this. What we just need to do is uh, let's invert it. And now, what does that look like? Looks like a roughness map to me. Pretty close. Now invert it. Now it's, a, it's a wee bit dark. If we're going to use it as an AO map, and the occlusion needs to be brighter. If we want it to look like that one anyway That's pretty close. That and that. Yeah, that's pretty close. So you can see how you can just take one picture and make all these others. Now there's also a filter in here to do a generic normals map. Well, well you hold on. If you do that, you're going to want it to be sRGB. RGB. Now, I, I uh, personally, I, I think of these as like a poor man's normal map because it's not really getting the information from 3D geometry. It's just basically analyzing this and applying a filter to it. Now, sometimes these damn things look pretty good. I ain't gonna lie, they do. In fact, sometimes they look better than baked normals that I bake. 
but you can see the difference in what makes baked normals more three-dimensional looking opposed to that that looks pretty flat like it's just uh, an engraving of uh, some sort or so now you see where we are with all this we can go back to our original image and close these down So that's the color map. Let's move it to grayscale. Uh, man, that already looks pretty good to me. We'll probably make it inverted for the roughness. That'll be the roughness right there. adjust the grayscale just a bit I want to make sure that we're not missing out here now that might work right there Export as this will be our AO map. Now I'm not a fan of these uh, normals here, but we'll we'll see how they look. Now when I do a normals, I always use like. They say to duplicate this a couple times, make two copies of it, each layer, and uh, change the uh, mode to uh, overlay for two of them, so you can see through all three. That makes sense. Yeah. So then this top image, you can offset it one pixel. So. You can make it larger one pixel or slide it over one pixel. Um, we'll just scale it one pixel larger. So it's 2048 by 2048. It'll be 2049 by 2049. And then the one on the bottom will scale it one pixel smaller. Now you can kind of see how it starts to make it look like it's better 3D but it's more of like an optical illusion kind of thing then you'll flatten the image and that'll be your normal map oh last thing it's a good idea to do a Gaussian blur at least 0.5 percent so if things are too sharp they, t they get aliasing really bad so this will be our normals I'll show you later how to do a better normals, but for now, this will be, uh, well, not say better, an alternate way. So, for now, this will be this. Now, let's get in the game and let's load it in there and see how it looks. Oh, dummy. The wrong thing.
Yeah, I was, uh, this grass is, uh, uh, one from Megascans, but I didn't save it when I was done with it. There's actually a little bit more to it than that. I didn't it doesn't have the uh, or yeah it does have all the stuff. So yeah, that's one of the mega scans and that one's only 2k. It's pretty cool. Let's make a new material. This will be new dirt. You name it whatever you want to name it. Ground model type will be um, you know, I'm going to pick gravel. Even though it's not really gravel. I'm going to pick gravel. I'm going to add the material. Now, once it's here, now once you add it and it's here, you can uh, add the base color. So, navigating over there to it, you'll want to, when you get there, copy this to your clipboard. Everything except the first little forward slash. Because you'll be coming back here, so it's easier to just paste and get there. So, the color goes to the color. And the ambient occlusion base goes to the ambient occlusion. Now this is the bare minimum. Oh yeah, and if you have a proper grayscale image, like you didn't forget to change it to grayscale, it'll be red in here. Now the scale, 2048 is a scale. Because that's what uh, I figured. I'll go to the rain tools and our new dirt. There's going to be sometimes a second one with a number after it. You know you didn't name yours with a number, so you know it's not that one, it's the other one. I don't know why it does that, but it, it does. And this is one of these ones that it's not going to look good unless you are far away. Because that was what its intended purpose was. It was uh, it was made so that it is something you view when you are at a quite a distance, not something for very close. And you know, it'd probably be even better if I had my display at 8K when I took the screenshot. I had a drone, and I got a good 4K drone. Oh, and we be making all kinds of stuff. A friend of mine out in Europe's got one. I keep telling him, man, if I had that drone, the things I could do. So anyway, that's their base color. And now you can see why you would want to also use a macro in detail, because base color by itself is not really intended to be looked at up close uh, just like a macro isn't really intended to be looked at from far away because it'll tile so that's why you mix the two to kind of get a little uh, variation now I think this map may be 1024 by 1024 uh, if that's the case I can let's scale this smaller Yeah, this is a 1024 map. You know how I know? Because that's the top there, and that's what them little mountains were that we were looking at. So then what you can do, well, we'll hide the forest. And then we'll go to this. Now, you know that it's like mountains, right? So, you know these things would be raised up. That's how you can kind of use the image as a kind of like a in a way a paint by number. It's kind of what it's like. You just 
basically You don't want to overdo it though, because then it'll start stretching it. It's kind of going to look good when it's stretched. Yeah, if something like that, I would stick, I'd use a mesh. I wouldn't try to make that go up too high. Because it's not going to do, I mean, you know, considering what you're trying to do with it here. And it's asking a lot to get it to do something. Turn the forest off. Dummy.
down the control key to multiple select. And this will, as you paint it, it'll put the forest item to the new height of your terrain. in the ground too far or too high in the air you know just all kind of just works out Let's make a macro. Let's make a macro. Uh, what are we going to base it off of? Well, we need to base it off something that looks good like dirt. And we need it to be a seamless tile.
see how big them damn pixels are. That's why you gotta change the scaling to like a hundred. <laughs> 